Welcome to Oregon Voters Digest, the program that brings forward the social and political issues that are important to people living here in the Pacific Northwest. And now, your host, Bruce Broussard. Welcome again to this segment of the Oregon Voters Digest. I'm Bruce Broussard, your host. Well, folks, we're going to have quite a show today, but before I do this, as you know, I always say something about veterans right up front. And uh, during my travels uh, uh, the, around the state, uh, I had a couple of comments that were made uh, about uh, some issues that they were very concerned, one of which was, uh, was unemployment with, with veterans. And uh, one of these guys gave me a, a, a sort of a, a note about a little his, historical note, and that was in regards to employment. Because that's going to be a big issue, you know, with the reference to uh, veterans from Vietnam, Vietnam veterans, uh, uh, Afghanistan, uh, Iraq, and the whole nine yards, and all those those individuals that were wounded, if you will, are going to be coming out very shortly. So jobs were really a major, major, major problem. But uh, the other thing was that um, about this issue was that, as you know, from a national perspective. Uh, against talking politics and whatever. we got a presidential race that's going to be becoming a very, very important one. And uh, the issue of immigration was a very major, major issue aspect of it. And uh, the, the point about something like 10 to maybe 10 to 40 million, million individuals have been identified as illegal in this country. But primarily we were, t we were focusing on, as we were chatting about this piece, we were pretty well targeting, if you will, uh, our neighboring country if you will, which is Mexico, and we're talking about illegal Mexicans here in this country. And, but anyway, this, this is what this note talks about. And uh, I'll read it, I'll read part of this. It said, what did, uh, what did, did you know this? What did President Hoover, Truman, and Eisenhower have in common? This is something that should be of great interest to you, so pass it around. I didn't know of this until it was pointed out to me. Back during the Great Depression, Herbert Hoover, President, President Herbert Hoover ordered the deportation of all illegal aliens in order to make jobs available to American citizens who desperately needed work. And then there was another Democrat, another Democrat, Democrat Harry Truman deported over two million illegal aliens after World War II to create jobs for returning veterans, and that's that's what caught our eye. And then in 54, 1954. Uh, General Dwight D. Eisenhower, who is now President uh, Dwight D. Eisenhower, deported 13 million Mexicans. The program was called Operation Wetback. It was done so World War II and Korean War veterans would have a better chance at jobs. It took two years, but they deported them. Now, if they could deport the illegal aliens back then, they could surely do it today. So, you know, and, and, and there was another little comment about, it's always name calling or whatever, but if you have doubts about the, the veracity of this information in our Operation Wetback. Now, you don't want to get in those, the name calling aspect of it, but that's the real world aspect of it. And people are very serious, and veterans are at, at this particular meeting that I was at was very serious. I just happened to be the, the outreach, uh, outreach veteran person um, uh, for the Republican Party for the state of Oregon. So it's a nonpartisan kind of a deal, but we were all gathered and we were talking about these particular issues and they gave me this particular note. So it is an issue and uh, it's a very serious issue. And even in the construction, you go around in the construction, uh, whereas as I was driving along an aspect of it, there were many, in all due respect, there were many um, uh, illegals that were working on construction jobs and the E-Verify was right there. I mean, that's another issue that we'll talk to. But the point of the matter is, we've got veterans that are going to be in, in dire need of jobs here very shortly, and, and, and that's going to be one of our focus that we're doing over here at the, as far as the, as far as the party's concerned, and that's my job, and that's my charge. So anyway, I just want to make sure we brought that piece up. And so now let's get into my show for today. I've got two fabulous people here today, uh, people who are very, very, very active, I wouldn't say controversy, they're active folks. I mean, I mean, that's not too, you know, that's not too often that you find folks that are willing to, to take the challenge and take the hit. And well, that's what they are. But before I do this, I wanna, I wanna bring a, I wanna make a, give you another quote from another famous American, happened to be a Republican. He made this particular note. It says, the ultimate measure, and I've, I've altered it just a moment, just a point. The ultimate measure of a man or a woman is not where he or she stands in moments of comfort and convenience, but where he or she stands at times of challenge and controversy. Another famous Republican, Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr., 1929 to 1968. 
and I've got these two people here with me right here. I'm glad today. you clarified he's a Republican. Yes. <laughs> oh, hey, but the, but the D's are constantly trying they to fight us. Fight the bottom line is that I know for a fact his dad was, you know, like my dad was back in Houston, Texas. A lot of the blacks were, in all due respect, were Republicans during that particular era. Yeah. And so anyway, and Dr. King, is, 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 uh, his daughter Bernice always makes that point when she comes out to this particular area. Okay, I've got, I'm here, I'm talking as if, as if to say I'm, we've already introduced you guys. I haven't introduced you. Mm -hmm. We've got Anne Marie Garnett. Garnet. Yes. How do you do, Anne? I'm well, how are you? It sounds fantastic. And, and Anne is, uh, she's, she, we will, we'll, we'll identify your job here very shortly. Okay, good. Okay. <laughs> but we do happen to have uh, Bill Curry, who happens to be the, the, the sitting, if you will, chairperson of the Oregon Republican Party. Yes. And welcome aboard. Thank you. All right, fine. But well, what we're going to do, we're going to talk about an issue that, um, that uh, one, of the, one of many issues that the Republican Party, it's my understanding, is going to, that's going to be sharing with, uh, with Oregonians around the state. Right. But the, but the neat thing about this piece is the efforts are going to be in a non-partisan partisan kind of a format. Right. You're educating Oregonians about issues that are relevant to Oregon. Right. I mean, that's, that's, a, that's a first. Very important to that's connect. A, that's a first. And so thank you very much for doing that. And thanks for serving. How about that? Absolutely. Okay, thank thanks you, for the okay, opportunity good. to be on the show. Again, like I said, uh, Bill, why don't we do this? Why don't we start off by, um, by sort of giving just a little brief introduction about the fact that you're a chairperson of the Oregon Republican Party. Just a little quickie. Just a little oh, uh, well, I was elected in February, and um, as I was running, one of the issues that came up was making sure that the party was addressing issues that are of a practical nature to Oregonians. And so the reason we're here today with Anne Marie is to talk about uh, an issue that the party is leading out in, which is to uh, improve government transparency. Good. And it doesn't sound like a big deal on, on the surface, but government transparency affects many, many other areas that we as a party are trying to address. Um, you know, we've seen the recent corruption from uh, state officials uh, yeah. and, and the disgrace of our former governor. Mm -hmm. And most of those situations, which were very costly to Oregonians mm -hmm. uh, in terms of projects that were mismanaged or where there was cronyism, resulted because of a lack of transparency. Mm -hmm. So I asked Anne Marie to uh, join us today, and she is the chair of the ORP's or Oregon Republican Party's Government Transparency Committee. Fantastic. In fact, why don't we just, just jump right in and, and, and what, what is transparent exactly when we talk about government from a lay standpoint? Can you add to that? Well, what, from, a yeah. lay, from a layman's, you know, Joe voter point of view, it's, it's citizen access to government. Okay. That can include um, things like public records, and we certainly see that a lot with Governor Kitzhaber and his emails. Um, it's also access to budgets or access to meeting minutes. In the state of Oregon, our public records le um, laws mm -hmm. are very prohibitive of that. If, if you're not just outright denied those records, you will be charged an awful lot of money for them. So it's, it's, it's very discouraging to try to get those records. But it also is other things like oversight. We're the only state in the union that does not have an, the ability to impeach. We as citizens can't fire our leaders. That's not good that is not access to government. So it's things like that. There's there's oversight and accountability that our citizens don't have. So transparency covers a lot of things. Mm -hmm. And I know we're going to get into a lot right, of those right, today. Right, so right, I don't right. even want to start opening right, that right, can right. of worms well, just you know, yet. It, it is a, it's, it's kind of interesting. A lot of times it's something that people are not aware of. You know what I mean? When you say transparency, what do you mean? That type right. of routine? But it's a problem evidently. It's Oregon. When we're so used to it, I yeah, think, yeah. we don't even realize it's a problem. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then a lot of times sometimes they, they play the politics of it and sort of get in sort of a confused state and everybody's sort of like over here doing this thing. But, but we do have a major problem in Oregon, right? Yeah. Many of your viewers probably can think of stories or situations where they were denied access to information that would have allowed them to utilize a government service, for example, or to find out what the government was doing in a particular situation. And I think a key element of our entire discussion here today is that the government is really responsible and works for the people. You know, the people are in charge. We've never given up that authority. And so we have the right to say, why did you make this decision? Or why did it cost this much? Or why, you know, did such and such happen? And when we lose, when we, if we give up that, if we abandon that and say, oh, well, I'm not gonna ask for that anymore. I'm not gonna demand to know why government did what it did then we're really uh, capitulating 
and giving up our right as citizens, and we never want to do that. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, and, and, and maybe we can talk a little bit about examples yes. uh, of this corruption piece aspect of it, because I, I can cite one, and you, and you take it from that point on. Uh, we spent a lot of time on the whole issue of the CRC, yeah. Columbia River Crossing, and uh, right up front with your voters and citizens were very upset about the, the millions and millions of dollars that we, we spent and got nothing. No. You got me? But there was a lot of things that came out of that, and we're still trying to figure out where did the money go? Right. Exactly. Okay. Well, if you talk, uh, uh, the forensic um, accountant that looked at that, she used those exact words. There was not enough oversight and mm -hmm. transparency in this project. And she's quoted as saying that there was not oversight. Mm -hmm. So, and if I, before I give a more specific example, here's something just that I found. There's a, there's a think tank out there called the Center for Public Integrity, mm -hmm. and they rank Oregon amongst 50 states with an F rating for the category of public access to information. Um, our neighbor to the north, Washington, they get a B plus. So it's really, it's actually kind of nice to have them as neighbors that mm -hmm. we can compare and we can talk about that a more as we go on. Sure. It also, this is the oversight part of it. It ranks Oregon with a D for executive accountability and legislative accountability and a D plus in judicial accountability. And what that means is things like, okay, this department just commit, there's, there's been corruption here. There, we've whittled away the accountability that the other branches can't hold mm -hmm. them accountable to that. Mm -hmm. So there's been a lot of graying of accountability. So mm -hmm. that's kind of the big picture. So think about that as we're talking. But I would say another another one that we've heard about lately, we just um, brought this up a few moments ago. Mm -hmm. we've, there's been a lot of talk about the sweet cakes um, yeah. um, case where this couple really got hammered by the Bureau of Labor and Industries. And it's starting to come out. And it's very difficult to find the records is the emails between the judge in that case and Basic Rights Oregon. Basic Rights Oregon is a very pro-gay and lesbian. Mm -hmm. um, that is purely their agenda. You can find it on their website. I'm not I'm not name calling right now. I'm mm -hmm. saying that's their agenda. They should not be having private influence. emails and mm -hmm. influence on a judge in a case. Good luck trying to get a copy of those emails, mm -hmm. even though that's a public official mm -hmm. and everything public officials do is considered public information. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, as you make that point, and I'm thinking about the viewing artists, and they make this thing, you put it sort of in a, couch it in sort of a political kind of a deal mm -hmm. between the R's and the D's. Right. And then we're sort of like, but we're paying for it. Yeah. All and of us paying are paying for it. Yeah, for all it. of us. Very, very, I mean, yeah, this isn't a, a partisan issue. Right. The government needs to be transparent for all of its citizens, mm -hmm. regardless of uh, which party might be in the majority or who the governor is. Mm -hmm. We should all have the ability, Republicans, Democrats, or otherwise, to get and access information about what our government's doing. Mm -hmm. um, certainly, there are certain exceptions, you know, where private information cannot be ex uh, given out. You know, people's information that would uh, that we need to uh, keep private to protect them. But what we have here is a situation where if you go to an agency and you ask for some information, just some basic information about how they're conducting operations or how much they've spent on this or that mm -hmm. of taxpayer dollars. There, under Oregon, current Oregon law, there's really no requirement or teeth if they fail to fulfill their, the request in a particular amount of time. In fact, uh, there's two problems. Is one is that they're not required to respond within a certain amount of time to your request, and two, they're not required to fulfill your request within a certain amount of time. So when you think about what happened with Kitts Harbor, the media was desperately trying to figure out what was going on with Sylvia Hayes and the mm -hmm. contracts and the environmental issues. Had the law required that those agencies fulfill those requests, we would have known before he was elected what was yeah, going on. Exactly. And we would have saved Oregon that embarrassment. Yeah. Citizens have that right. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I, I, that was the other thing about the vetting, thinking about the solution to that yeah. problem. You just make that a good point aspect of it. Because in all due respect, that would have changed the, the gubernatorial election. That would have been a game changer. Time, you know, and they respect. knew that. Yeah, Gov yeah, yeah. Kids Hopper's people knew that, yeah. and they held back knowing mm -hmm. that. Well, yeah. But they made it political. Yes, they did. See, yeah. it, it should have yeah. been Oregonian and what's the what's right. best for Oregon aspect of it. Right. And, and really just lay that out, because I, I still remember the, the lesser corn situation. Yes. Same, same. Mm. It was a lesser corn, but they held it back, if you will. And then, as you know, we got the other results. So that's why I make the point about the fact this really the issues that we're talking about here for today, folks, it really is a nonpartisan situation. I realize we do have an election process that's going on at this point in time, but it's a very serious problem here in Oregon. I mean, I think about all kinds of things. So you guys are really going out and vetted. You did your homework. We that's did. What I'm we did. And, and th like this is an issue um, that 
I am so proud of the Republican Party for taking a strong stand on. Uh, you know, I want to point out that the the representatives of all of the counties of Oregon, what we call our state central committee, came together and statewide, as a Republican Party, mm -hmm. decided unanimously that this was a top, the mm -hmm. top priority mm -hmm. issue for us to to go after to to restore uh, public confidence mm -hmm. and trust in government again. Much needed. And and you know we're not sitting here, and I want to make it really clear that we're yeah. not sitting here in a position where we're in an ivory tower that mm -hmm. that every Republican is flawless. You know it, these rules need to apply to Republicans as well. Yeah. You know so if 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 one of our own is doing something they shouldn't, they need to be called out for that. But it needs to be a, uh, needs to it needs to exist and it needs to apply evenly. Yeah. Well, I'm really excited about this. I'm sure that you and ours are going to be very, very excited about this because there's always been this, this one-sided issue that this state has always been democratic and that's the way it's going to be. And, um, and then whatever the, the other brand, i.e. sticks their head up and whatever, they would be talking all kinds of weird situations, you know, from the standpoint of whether it be racism and all that kind of stuff. But we got a problem. We do. We, we can't afford, if you will, to be a divide situation. That's right. We just got to basically elect the that's right, right people. Right. And, well, in... And if I can add this too, in one and another small part of it, it is unfortunately a political issue because these all of these laws have been slowly chipped away and put into place for the last 30 years. The Democrats have for the most part been in charge. So they've created a really nice environment for them to do things behind closed doors and act and to and allow things like Kitsaber and CRC and cover Oregon and all of those things to occur. And so at this point, I would call on my de Democrat uh, registered folks to say, hey, you know what, my party has behaved badly, we need to change this for everyone. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, so in that, as far as you're concerned, you, you, you're entertaining them coming in as far as the solutions. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Okay, okay, because that solution is, is really the key. Are you, are I'm you doubtful, though. Huh? <laughs> I'm going to tell you that. I, I'm going to be funny about it. I'm doubtful because this last legislative session, um, Republicans put forward a, a great number of bills that were very fair and part and non transparency. On or? transparency, I'm going to. Uh, here's one that I thought mm -hmm. was really good. Uh, House Bill 3505 requires public bodies to establish public records retention schedules that require, the re it's, a, it's a time manner for retaining public records. Democrats voted that down, did not allow that to be heard. There's another one that made it so that if you, this was in response to, during the Cover Oregon um, legislative committees, when they were, when that was going through committees, mm -hmm. there were several people, Pat, uh, Representative Patrick Sheehan said, these people are lying, they're lying here. Mm -hmm in front of the committees. And this that law simply made it that if you're going to testify before a committee, you're under oath. Was it a party vote? I mean, were it was. There, were Democrats, there D's, were there D's on party, line vote. party line votes. Those, Democrats uh, voted down, making it. So the D's need, at least, and so these are our elected representatives. And, I, and mm -hmm. um, Bill said it great earlier. I would encourage all of us, Look at your legislator and see how they voted on some. And I can name off these bills. See how they voted and call them and ask you them. Some more bills, you? Oh, I, I do. We have House Bill 3331 authorizes the Legislative Assembly to appoint an independent council by joint resolutions. What that makes it is so that you have this independent board over here that can do an investigation, not the Government Ethics Commission that is appointed by the governor. It's really hard to ask an ethics commission to investigate a governor that's under investigation. <laughs> yeah, we, the, yeah, the Republican Party and the, and the legislative members introduced into, uh, into the legislature, this last legislative session, a number of meaningful mm -hmm. um, bills that would have addressed ethics and government transparency. And they, all of them, all of them were voted down on a party line vote because uh, Democrats are in the majority. So, you know, they, they, it doesn't matter how much Republicans support them, they're not going to pass mm -hmm. if they decide to all vote the same way. Mm -hmm. And so that's really troubling because uh, here we are coming out of a, a governor election that was riddled with scandal and controversy and we're not able to address the situation. And our, our colleagues, our, our legislative members, have been unfairly attacked as not um, participating in ethics reform with the governor. Well, what the governor did was said, I'll take a seven member government ethics commission and increase it to nine members. Well, that's 
just adding more government watching government. Mm -hmm. What we're what we're proposing, what our uh, Republican legislators have proposed, is allowing the people to have access to the information, so that they can check and make sure the government is uh, staying within the boundaries of the law. Uh, because in many cases, these these activities are themselves that are being shielded are illegal. Hmm. Yeah. But you know, you, you I, I, I keep making this point uh, going back, not being redundant, but you're talking about inclusionary. I mean, you, you're not talking about just basically just party line. You know, you're saying, hey, this is politics as usual, if you will. You, you're saying, hey, this is something that we should. We certainly can't person. allow this to become politics as that's usual. That's right. That's right. That's right. That would be devastating. We cannot take another legislative session of this kind of behavior in the in the House and the Senate where good bills that would address real problems that impact Oregonians are completely disregarded. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you know, and I guess the other point I, I'm making here is that, and that's why we're doing this show folks right here now, is because uh, because it, it, it is inclusion and, and to come up with a solution, yes. to come up with a solution is going to take us all together. Yes, to that's right. Thing. So that's at right. the end of the day, it's going to be a benefit to everybody. It is. And that's right. Then you can go back to whatever you want to do <laughs> in regards to it. It's just so, it just so happened it's happening during this particular time mm -hmm. frame aspect of it. But it's, that's why it's so important to just remind you that, in fact, we're talking about a nonpartisan issue that's affecting us all, yeah. the taxpayer. I'm glad you brought that up, Bruce, because um, what we have going that Anne Marie is in charge of, in addition, in addition to the committee, is the uh, a tour, an eight-stop tour throughout Oregon. Right. And you talked about getting people involved. It, right. it, it isn't us just talking here right. about this, oh, right. we need to do this or we okay. need to do that. Right. We want to, what we're doing is, uh, and I should let Ann talk about it because she's arranged it all, is uh, we're asking for the public to meet with us, with our, with their local legislators, mm -hmm. whether they're a senator or, or a House member, and present the issues that they've encountered that have been problems. And by doing so, we can gather these stories and start identifying some solutions. We want to hear the ideas that they may have that mm -hmm. would make it better. But until we hear from the people that are impacted directly, we really can't carve out a solution, or, you know, mm -hmm. we can't define a solution. Right, so. right, right, right. And, 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 and you want to add a little bit more to that? Yeah, I would say, um, and I would say it's any elected official. Our first stop is this coming Tuesday, September 2nd in Clackamas at the River Shore mm -hmm. Inn. Um, county commissioners, local mayors, um, anyone who's had, who is on the in, quote unquote, on the inside of government, I hate to say that, who's had some had the thought to themselves, I wish people knew what was going on that I'm seeing that I can't necessarily talk mm -hmm. about or no one would believe. Right. Come share those stories, but also those folks on the outside, like Bill or myself, or maybe even you, where we've, hey, can I get a copy of that budget? No. Or it'll cost you $10,000 or whatever. Mm -hmm. There's some of those ridiculous stories that we have the one ridiculous story where um, somebody did a, a record request to the zoo. It was in the news. I have a copy of it. To co it was on coin, mm -hmm. um, eighteen thousand dollars to get copies of the records of the elephant program there. Mm -hmm. Eighteen thousand dollars. That's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. <laughs> That's a lot of money for public information. Well, tell me this. I mean, yeah. that's another question that I had in regards. I'm, 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 I'm going to devote that to you. Is that if transparency is important, why is it in dispute? I mean, how did we get to that particular point? Well. <laughs> Go both for it. Both yeah, both we both yeah, have yeah. answers here, yeah, so yeah, I was yeah, going to yeah, say. Right. The short answer is we, we, we have one party rule, yeah. and we have effectively had one party rule for too long. Yeah. And when one party is allowed to operate without uh, consequence, you know, we get in a situation where uh, it starts costing us. If you, if you look at um, what happened with the cronyism under Kitts Harbor through Sylvia Hayes, Patricia McCaig, the, the costly boondoggle that we call the Columbia River Crossing, mm -hmm. the hundreds of millions of dollars that were spent there of taxpayer money, much of it hidden from public view because of a refusal to respond to records requests mm -hmm. when asked for many times by the media, will cost the average Oregonian family hundreds of dollars a year. And in fact, if you added up all of them, it's probably closer to 1,000. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's, it's a shame that we have a situation where state government is allowed to continue to do these things at a huge cost to its citizens. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, there's no mechanism to correct it currently <laughs> under law. And that's, that's what we're here for, is to encourage citizens to come forward so that we can define laws 
that will reverse the situation and get, put the citizen back in charge. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, and if and I can, you, and, I, and yeah. if I could add that too, and I and I'll be a, a little bit more forceful, probably is that mm -hmm. we right now we have a system that works really good for one party. They can operate in a shroud of secrecy, and that gives you power, and that allows you to make decisions and to do things knowing that the public can't see it. So if I were in that position, I'd want to protect it, mm -hmm. and I would dispute records and mm -hmm. allowing the public access into this. I would dispute that because you're going to have to ha hand over some power. But mm -hmm. this is we, we're in America. Mm -hmm. This mm -hmm. is where the citizens. This is a you know by the people for the people yeah. sort of thing. So yeah, I wouldn't be surprised at all if some of your viewers are asking themselves, well, it, how costly is this? you know, uh, yeah. to, to government to provide access to records when someone asks for it. Is it possible that someone could abuse that and just keep making requests, mm -hmm. right, and, and just cost us all a lot of money because government's spending time responding to requests rather than doing whatever their job is in that particular agency? Well, there are reasonable controls that most every other state has put into place to prevent that from happening. It's mm -hmm. not like we can't do it. The model's already been created. Mm -hmm. We just have to implement it here in Oregon so that we can we stop this out of out of uh, this runaway train. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you in fact, uh, Henry, you were mentioning about the bills, some of the bills that were introduced, yeah. talking to this issue, and I take it this has been an ongoing thing through a number of years. Yeah. Because it, it, from a political standpoint, it, it has been said and noted that uh, it made it very clear that it was a uh, the Democrats were basically in control of government for years and years and years, and so but yet and still. You guys are saying, okay, let's. We need to talk about this issue. It's a nonpartisan kind of a deal, and let's say if you are, if, let's say if the party was successful in, i.e., now they are the leading proponent. You're basically setting, you're setting rules and regulations to make sure that that doesn't happen again. Right. Yeah. If Fair? if if Republicans end up being in in control in either the House or the Senate or or take some of the statewide offices, mm -hmm. for example, these rules will apply to them as well right. and should. Right. 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 Yep. You know we. This isn't again. This isn't a Republican or a Democrat issue. This is a uh, a nonpartisan. Uh, the public servants serve the citizens issue, and 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 again, I just I want to emphasize that we have sort of capitulated over time to government and mm -hmm. said, oh, you know, there. Like if a police officer stops you, for example, yes, they're an authority, but as a citizen, if they do something wrong, you certainly have mechanisms in place under the law right now mm -hmm. to expose or challenge something that was not done correctly. Mm -hmm. Why don't we have those same capabilities with mm -hmm. our statewide offices and our um, uh, other and our agencies mm -hmm. that are that are shielded from that kind of incursion, not incursion, but that that kind of uh, exposure. Mm, good. Sounds great. Tell you what we're going to do. We're going to take a short break. We're going to take a short break. And I got a few more questions. Some of them might be redundant, but the bottom line is that hopefully we'll clarify it as much as we can for this next half hour so folks can really get into what we're talking about, the seriousness of this. Right. Okay, fine. We'll take a short break. We'll be right back. You are watching Oregon Voters Digest. This program can be seen again on these channels on these dates and times. Tell a friend. Welcome back, folks. Again, I'm Bruce Broussard, your host. We're talking about transparency in government. Boy, that's a heavy, 
especially during these political times, yes, you will. And I really want you to take that so-called partisan politics during the time, because this transparency in government is a very serious problem here in the state of Oregon, and that's why we're discussing it. It just so happened uh, one of the one of the leading proponent, if you will, and uh, uh, political proponent is is here with me today. That happens to be the Republican Party. Could have been the other side, but. But as one would say, the Democrats have been pretty well in control here in the state of Oregon for a number, number of years. And, you know, things happen. You know what I mean? They, they can be. We need change. We do. It's just unfortunate that, you know, folks tend to kind of take advantage of the situation. And, again, I am very, very much aware because we spent a lot of time with Tiffany when she was doing her forensic studies. She, she came here. She, she was here first. Mm -hmm. We had her here first. And she spent many hours talking about all of the, 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 the theft and corruption and whatever, and it finally took beforehand. And she was, I mean, she, she'd been threatened and all kinds of problems and whatever. And you know, you were, the, you were here when we were doing this thing. But the bottom line is here, now all of a sudden we've got an entity that's willing to, i.e., bring this thing to the table. It takes time, it takes a lot of effort, and it just so happened the Republican Party is, uh, is, uh, is taking on that effort, and, and they, they made it a focus as part of what they're doing. They could be spending more time doing some other things, but they're just basically saying, okay, fine. Hey, if we do a good job, you know, and then maybe look at some of the candidates and maybe challenge some of your side of the deal. In fact, call your folks. In fact, I may even ask them a question about maybe we might be able to get uh, uh, Frank the D, uh, have him come on over to the, uh, right here on, on the show and say, hey, I'm committed to this piece and we'll work with you. Very good. Let's see what happens, okay? Right. But anyway, we, we're, we're talking to both Anne-Marie Gurney, who happens to be the Government Trans Transparency Committee Chair, and, uh, and then actually she's been introduced by the chair of the ORP and, um, and uh, with, with, I'm sorry, with Bill, Bill Curry. I'm sorry, Bill. Bill's been around for quite some time, and the fact of the matter is, he's he's made this commitment. He's new. He's newly appointed chair, and and hopefully we're going to probably have something from the Republican Party on a monthly basis to yeah, educate, the, educate Oregonians. Yeah, know. the party as a whole has made a commitment to this, well, and uh, and I think they've chosen wisely an yeah. issue that um, impacts you, you know so many Oregonians that. Uh, we're we're making a difference basically yeah. by good. addressing this issue. That's fantastic. Well, hey, look, let's get into a few more questions. I want to ask me a few more questions, some of which may be a little redundant, but I want to make sure you get the point. Okay, uh, one of the questions I want to I'm gonna throw this out to you, Ann. Okay, how about Governor Kate Brown has proposed ethics reforms. Mm -hmm. She's newly newly appointed and newly elected, if you will, not elected, but she was appointed, right? Okay, why don't Republicans join her in this effort? Well, really you are. That's why we're doing what we're doing. Kind of like right, well, but we would disagree with um, yeah. what her what her, what she would define as ethics reform, oh, okay. and that is that she she to add more government to watch government. Mm. That is not mm. transparency. That's just making more government. How's she doing that? How's she doing that? Talk, talk. She about. is um, increasing the size of the government. Um, I'm sorry, the governor's ethics committee. That's the big committee that actually was started by uh, Kit Sauber. And that's the um, committee he, he has gone to for Cover Oregon, for I believe even the Sylvia Hayes emails, I believe. But he appoints them. The majority of that, mm, bo that mm. board is appointed by him and funded by him. So it's like asking your best friend to oversee what, you're, what you could be doing wrong. That doesn't seem very transparent. And, and not only that, the public isn't allowed into that have you, process. Have you all thought about the possibility of how that should, as far as that authority, should it be the governor, should it be by the people? Or so interesting any, any you thoughts? mentioned that. We talked about this bill a moment ago, House Bill 331, which authorizes the legislative assembly, not the executive branch, but the legislature to appoint an independent committee uh -huh. to do the same thing. So you have a different branch of the government overseeing, and that's the checks and balances that our founding fathers wanted. That bill was voted down down party lines. Wow. The Democrats and, and, voted that down. And so benefit, that was an answer though to that okay. government ethics commission. And the benefit of the to, to these to the folks that are watching this here, the legislative committee is made up of both R's and D's. Right. Right? And not and and the governor governor who could be under investigation is not part of that process. Uh -huh. It's an independent committee that is independent of that person's influence. And that she she shared that thought. She knew she knew about this particular mm -hmm. bill. Achieve. Well, okay, you're gonna have to do something here. <laughs> yeah, well, oh, come on. Um, Republicans have been questioned as to why we're not joining, uh, and and you brought up that question, right. uh, Governor Brown, in in this appointment of two additional people to the government ethics committee. 
that's fine. Uh, it, it costs more to add more people, and it's more government watching government. It, the reason that it's not we're not excited about it is it doesn't solve the problem. Right. The real issue is what kind of ability do the citizens have to verify that government is performing properly mm -hmm. and ethically? Mm -hmm. And asking government to watch government is not the, is not the solution. Mm -hmm. And I guess the other thing, Jim, just a little side note from, from a lay standpoint, is, is there's this other logo about OPM. Are you familiar with OPM? Mm -mm. Other people's money. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you can spend all you want yeah. on it. Tom the taught me is that Government one. money is our money. That's, exactly. Yes, and exactly. It's, Boy, I tell you, this we're is, in the is red. getting better. Okay, Bill, I got something for you. I'm, okay. I've got one for you. What is the difference between Kate Brown's effort and the Republicans' efforts? for reform. You talked a little bit about that on the front end, but let's, let's bring it back to the table. Well, Anne Marie's done a good job of highlighting uh, several of the bills that uh, were presented that were turned down by Democrats in the legislature to uh, bring about meaningful ethics reform and, and better government transparency. The, the difference, and we started to talk about that on the previous question, is that what Governor Brown is proposing is not a solution that is, has any concrete bearing. It is a, a change in the makeup of a board or a committee, but it is not a specific change that citizens can act upon to get better or more information about what government is doing. Um, and so I, I find it very similar uh, to you hiring a contractor to work on your house. Okay. And the, the government is supposed to serve the people. We hire by electing officials we hire them into office and we're we're paying for them as well and we're paying for everything that they do in their official capacity can you imagine hiring a contractor he's working on your house and he says i'm not going to show you what i'm doing i'm not going to share with you the costs i'm not going to share with you the sub any information about the subcontractors that are doing the work what would you do would you, you'd probably fire him right yes. you'd replace him uh you certainly wouldn't let it continue and that's that's what we're emphasizing is that it is our state as citizens. The public officials, the agencies, they work for us. And we have a right to know what they're doing. They don't have the authority. Even we haven't given them the authority to tell us what we need to know and what we don't mm -hmm. need to know. Mm -hmm. We have the authority to decide what we need to know and what we don't need to know. Mm -hmm. And so when, when they are refusing or delaying requests for information, as they did with Kitzhaber, for mm -hmm. example, uh, during his election, they are, you know, I, I, say, I think of it as um, information delayed is information denied, mm -hmm. just like justice delayed is justice denied. Mm -hmm. If we don't have, and, and thus we, have, we had Kitzhaber elected into office who resigned in shame because we, that could have been avoided mm -hmm. because of this very situation. Yeah. So that's the difference between what we're talking about and what Governor Brown is talking about. Mm -hmm. She's talking about nebulous uh, changes that don't bring about concrete results. We're talking about very specific bills that have specific provisions that place requirements on agencies to be responsive, uh, whether it's in terms of timeliness or completeness of the information provided. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, to this now, I mean, those are some very uh, pretty well um, self-explanatory, mm -hmm. right to the point, uh, addressing the issue of transparency. Mm -hmm. uh, are you, how are we going? Are we going to put them back on the table uh, during this election cycle? I mean, that how are we going to do that? You know, I, that would be nice. To me, the sky's the limit, but at this point, we want to get through our listening tour and hear what the people want. Mm -hmm. This is definitely a grassroots. We want to hear from Oregonians and hear their ideas, because I can come up with good ideas. Bill can come up with good ideas, but it's just our idea. We want to mm -hmm. hear what Oregonians have and what their experience has been, and then gather these ideas and come up with some really concrete, and we can say, the people have spoken. Mm -hmm. This is what they want. But like I said, you've got those bills. They, I do. The people have spoken to a certain yes. degree, because they put those bills out there on the table, and we've got folks who are out there making changes right now right. and adding more folks to, to, to basically well, and committees. What's, what's a bummer about these bills, they're good bills, uh -huh. but, our, but the handful of Republicans that we had in our legislature were doing it. They were trying to publicize it. They were trying to... They're only a small group of people. This is going to be great because we are going to undergird them and come forward with even better ideas. I'll give you two more uh, beyond what uh, mm -hmm. Anne Marie has, has talked about. One is a whistleblower. Mm -hmm. There yes. was a bill to protect whistleblowers. If you're in an, a, a, a government agency and you know about some emails that shed some light on a question that the citizens have, 
it was to protect you from revealing that information lawfully. I, I don't mean information you shouldn't reveal, but information that would shed light on what was going on. Mm -hmm. There was a bill to protect a whistleblower in that situation. It was voted down by the Democrats. Keeping in mind that that, that, that is something that uh, Governor Brown needs to own because when the whistleblower for the Kitsaber emails came right, out, she went to prosecute that person. And our Republican leaders in, in our legislature came forward with that bill to protect that person and any future person. Wow. And suddenly she changed her mind on that. It Where was is that person right now? I mean, is, is the person still on the job? I'm or? not sure. I'm I don't think sure. they're on their job. They're I, on the I job, don't think but, so anymore. But I remember in the yeah. newspaper, I remember, I remember yeah. reading it, and he was afraid. And I would be afraid, too, because suddenly you have nobody that yeah. will protect you. And so mm. it's that was that was good legislation. But you make the point about that's why it's so important about the transparency. It is. It is, is very important. To have the discussion. And again, now I, I, I can say it, politically speaking, we, we do have an upcoming election. Yes. Uh, she has to run for office. Uh, and she needs to explain and this, that. this should be part of the platform of yes. a discussion for the people as a whole. So whoever's running for office need to talk to and address the issue. They already got the format in terms of what they need to do about this issue that we're talking yeah. about right now. What if I, and if I can add this too, I think it should become a, an issue because if there's a Democrat incumbent in office mm -hmm. who voted down these bills, we need to ask them at their town halls, mm -hmm. at any events that they're speaking at, anything where they're out in the public, we need to ask them. And if you're a Republican, you need to look at this resolution and say, you know what, I support this. Unfortunately, it is going to be, it does, it does cross party lines. I wish it didn't, but in terms of those elected officials, it does. It becomes a party issue, but it can strengthen our Republican candidates, yeah, yeah. and our Democrat incumbents need to explain. They have, they have to explain their votes. Yeah, you're right, and all due respect, it, there's not such thing as a bland after the election. If a person living in an area and they're being represented by a Democrat, either way, they can pick up the phone and that, that ledger and ask them that question. Why? Why did you vote to? Exactly. For, that for particular this, bill. Yeah. Now, when you throw, throw those out again, I, I like that. You give, give me a couple. Well, the of one that I and again it comes to um, to testifying in a committee at, at our legislature, House Bill twenty seven ninety one, which includes false statements made to a legislative committee by certain persons a crime. It made it makes it perjury. Yeah. Yeah. It should be because yeah. you're lying to. A, policy is going to be made on this. House Bill 3505 requires public bodies to establish, but that's the public records retention. Um, House Bill 3043 provides that upon being sworn into office or other stated for, or for other stated reasons, the governor shall file a declaration with the uh, Government Ethics Commission declaring identity of first spouse and identifying official policy making or agenda setting duties of the first spouse. That was in direct um, Addressing the Kitzhaber issue right. of we have this woman that's a girlfriend. She's right. not a spouse, but she's part of the household. Yeah, and they're crea that created a gray area. That bill was to define the role and the and is this person public or private and right. to define that which yes. was voted down. Wow. We need we if we anything need that, that the Sylvia Hayes yeah. Kitzhaber thing that showed that problem. They tried to address the problem, and the Democrats voted wow. it down. That's wow. sad. That's yeah. sad. And we're paying for it. Yes, we are. The public's paying, paying for, it. for it. Across the board, by the way. Absolutely. Yes. Uh, okay, good. That's it. Now, let's, let's talk a bit more about the tour, the listening tour yeah. aspect of it. Let's talk about, and while you're doing that, in fact, I'll, I'll throw out the bill of two laws at the same time. Let's talk about that and where you're going to be going. And first off, again, what's the purpose, again, of the, of the tour? Yeah, I know it's getting the word out, but I want you, I want you to read it. Well, it's pretty simple. Uh, everybody knows that we've had problems in Oregon with uh, these controversies and this uh, this lost money uh, due to these uh, projects and boondoggles that are related to cronyism. And, and, and uh, what we're doing with this is we're stopping in eight pla different places in Oregon, on the east side, west side, north, south. We're connecting with Oregonians about stories that they want to share related to issues that they've had, trying to get information or uh, to um, find out more about something that, that happened in government. And so it's, it's, a, it's a really a, more of a conversational style. We'll have a panel at each of these eight stops of their local uh, legislative members who can help 
uh, answer questions as well as uh, suggest ideas. And so in each one of these uh, stops, we're going to gather information, we're going to collate that, we're going to, to make sure that we have each idea presented to the legislators so that they can introduce bills that reflect what the people think are the best ways to solve the problem. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and I, would, and I would put out there, if anyone has time on this Wednesday night, the first one is in Clackamas at the River Shore. Barn Grill. Barn Grill, thank you, on Clackamas Drive, right off of the mm -hmm. Oregon City exit at uh, 7 to 8.30, I believe. I always forget right. the times. Mm -hmm. So feel free to come and join us. And if anything, just to listen. I think the stories we're going to hear are going to... Yeah be hair raising a little bit mm -hmm. and um, we're like I, like Bill said we're going to keep track of them it's going to be kind of town hall style stand up and give your story I think it's almost going to be like okay we're going to have to keep people within the yellow lines mm -hmm. of time so mm -hmm. yeah. um, I'm excited about it um, I haven't confirmed yet who's coming to that one yet but I do have stories already from elected officials that are going to be shared there to kind of mm -hmm get people talking. So. Well, I think it's, it's very important. And I really appreciate the fact, Bill, that you, you, you've given us a call. You've given me a call, and, and we're trying to help, if you will, mm -hmm. to get the people out and uh, to let them know that you, they're not going to be turned back if they come to the door. And, and if they're Democrat, Independent, Libertarian, whomever, it's just an Oregonian, right? Yep. You Whatever know, limitations the fire marshal puts on the uh, on the building. On the building, yeah, that's all. That, that's right. <laughs> okay. The other thing I was going to ask is that um, now in terms of uh, for instance, as far as getting the schedule and things of that nature, I understand you said something about the website? Uh, yes. Uh, it's, it's, again, very simple. OregonRepublicanParty.org is the uh, URL. So that's OregonRepublicanParty.org. And at that site, you can see a schedule of all eight stops and uh, the exact location. We have two of the locations where we're still finalizing the exact address, okay. but those are farther down. I think those aren't until October, mm -hmm. as I recall. Mm -hmm. So all of the ones in September... Uh, have an address, and you can pick the one close to you and participate. Well, that's good. That's good. In fact, what, what we'll do, maybe, if it's possible, maybe we can just type those out when you, when you get yeah. that whole listing, and I'll make it a point to, oh, to advertise great, great. it on one of the shows that, I, that we, we that do. That would be excellent. Uh, the other thing I was going to ask you about this piece is that, uh, is there a phone number? Like, there is a phone number there on the website. There is. Just in case. Cause a lot of, for instance, like seniors and folks like that might, might want to be able to access, but sometimes yeah. have a little more difficult. you got to be a little the, bit more. The phone number is 503 Five nine five, eight 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 one. That's okay. Yep. That's you. No, no, that's not me. No, <laughs> no, uh, that's but our someone, that's our main some, office. Someone yeah. will answer the phone. Right? Someone will answer the phone they, if it's after hours. Of course, you'll get they, a message. They'll be knowledgeable about the, this whole issue. Yeah. They can direct them to where the closest location is, or if if they have a question about how to attend or or, or what it's about in general, they can they can call and we'll uh, make sure they get the information they need. Okay, good. Now, Ann, you're going to be quite busy. I am. So you got, you got. We want, we want to spend a little bit more time with you now, to kind of like sharing with them in terms of mm -hmm. one, what are you going to be doing on the tour, and and uh, you know you're going to be going around the state, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And they, they're going to be seeing you. You're going they're going to see there. Bill and, and Bill me. And I'm you. going to be there, writing notes frantically, okay. Okay. Uh, taking stories down and supporting gonna... Bill because he's going to be moderating these events. That's not good. Well, actually, um, Anne actually has some stories of her own yes. that I'm sure that people will. Uh, that she'll share and that are quite interesting as well. So I'm, you know, she will uh, she'll be able to contribute and get the uh, prime the pump, so to speak, so that people mm -hmm. understand what what it is that we're talking about, and then they can share their st stories as well. Yeah, I think that's a very very important piece. And again, uh, like I said, we're we're talking about transparency. It's been an issue, uh, a political issue, uh, for a long time. It's just been sort of couched in the in the corner. No one says anything. The only, uh, the only thing that that happens is that. Um, we pay for it. Our going is paid <laughs> yes, for it. We do. <laughs> and and then, uh, trust me, as a person, I, I pay for it. I'm a small business person, and I see the bill. My wife constantly asks me, what, what are we going to do here? <laughs> <And> so, <laughs> but my point is, that's the problem that we're having, and, and it's affecting us all. That's right. And, and in all due respect, it's even affecting Democrats, because you have to pay, too. Now, uh, right. what we're trying to do is we're talking about giving you a few bucks back, if you will, in many <laughs> exactly. ways, aspect of it. I mean, I realize we're right in the midst of a political, we, we, we're right in the political, you, you can't help but not notice it right. with, the national, with the national piece as it is, uh, the presidential race and aspect of it. But we're talking about Oregon issues. Mm -hmm. We're talking about issues here in Oregon. It's a very serious issue aspect of it. Uh, we, as, as they've said, we've talked about the whole issue with the Kits Hopper thing. We've talked CRC for sure. I know that backwards and forward and sideways. And those are millions, of, hundreds of millions of dollars 
I mean, people are talking about maybe the a rainy day fund where people could have gotten some extra dollars and whatever, but oh for some gosh. strange reason, think we about what we, we could have get, done. Oh my God, with four hundred million dollars. Uh, well, education, but we catch you. That's another problem. In fact, you guys need to do a vetting on education. Yeah. Maybe you guys can come up with a one of the issues to try to solve that particular problem because our kids are not getting educated. Yeah. If you think about it, almost all of the issues that we need to address ultimately tie back to transparency because if we can't get the truth and the complete picture right. out of our government, what hope do we ever have of solving right. any particular problem? Every We've got to start with honest, yeah. honesty. Every issue that is near and dear to our hearts, transportation, education, right. property rights, taxes, yeah. jobs, this issue it's strengthens right them it's for right those there. of us who are trying to make wow. a difference. Wow. Bill, I got to ask you this. I mean, you you picked a. I mean, a, a, you know, we want you to do more work. You, you just just the announcement that this is this is going to happen around the state is good. Any other little ideas? You might just give us a little a little something and say, hey, uh, what's to be expected? Well, this is one of going. several <laughs> initiatives from the party. It's it's. Uh, Probably the most important right at the one at the moment, okay. and I and I believe it will continue to build. Uh, we'll form a coalition statewide of people that will help us define uh, ways Are to change easy. the laws to, to make our government more accountable, transparent. But beyond that, we also have. Um, uh, uh, s several other programs, uh, okay. economic impact programs, really? jobs and economy related to the jobs and the economy. That uh, we have another um, uh, coalition that we're building of folks that have been impacted by the closure of Terminal Six, mm -hmm. and the ability to in inability to, to ship containers uh, from Oregon is costing uh, agriculture and other businesses millions. It's in the hundreds of millions of dollars. Mm -hmm. And these folks um, are left with no cost-effective way to get their goods to market, uh, whether it's other states in the U.S. or international. So it's a huge, huge problem mm -hmm. when our port is shut down for export and they have to go to Tacoma. Uh, we're basically shutting down Oregon. So yeah. all of the jobs associated with that, yeah, the economy affected, yeah. the, the producers, uh, the businesses impacted, uh, we're, we're going to be coming up with some meaningful change there, much in the same way. We're going to go talk with people, get their ideas, and figure out what changes we can make to open Oregon back up for business again. So the Terminal 6 is just an example of that. But uh, the party is very focused now on, prag on, on issues that, that affect Oregonians, every Oregonian, in the pocketbook or in their ability to have free speech speak out or to protect themselves. These are areas that we just can't ignore. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What's interesting, if I can jump in on sure. the, the port issue that you were just talking about, I was on a conference call with the gentleman who's going to see, oversee that. Jeff Lorton. Jeff Lorton. Um, he got on the call a little bit after me, and so he heard the tail end of me talking about transparency, and he said, talk about transparency. Had we been able to look at the contracts from 20, 25 years ago and had access to public information, our port would be open today. Wow. Wow. So I, that just brings about the whole, this undergirds so many of the issues. Wow. So it many really of does. these sorts of issues, it, yeah. it really, It really does. And like I said, I, I, just, can't, I, I just can't overemphasize mm -hmm. the point about the fact that, and thanking you for uh, making this a part of your, of your, your time or if you, your presidency, if you will, your chairmanship, that you're going to be focusing on major issues that are affecting Oregonians and uh, not being so political about it, just being very open about it and say, okay, fine, uh, we'll take the chance. You know, I mean, hey, if, uh, if we, we've got folks running, you may want to get a, get a second chance, if you will, a second look, if you will, at the person running with the understanding that that's the platform that yeah. was built. I'm so glad you mentioned that. Uh, we would ask everyone to really take a look at their senator and their representative in their district and look at how they voted. In fact, I'll make a commitment here. I wasn't prepared to do this, no but I, it, yeah. I will do it right now. Is it was the first. On yeah, the right. website that we gave earlier, OregonRepublicanParty.org, we will, it won't be there today, but maybe in a few days, uh, we'll put a link to a document that shows how their senator or their representative voted. So yeah. it'll be real easy for them to find yeah. out. And then they can say, hey, why did you vote this way? Yeah. And maybe they all want to consider voting for someone who is for yeah. transparency, yeah. because as Anne Marie likes to say, if you're not for transparency, you're for corruption. Yeah. Well, you know, I really appreciate that because I'm sure the viewing audience will appreciate that also too. Because too often, you know, it's, it's uh, the format, if you will, for getting elected is pretty well fixed. Yeah. 
you know, the... the, the, the it the, feels the, fair, doesn't it? Yeah, it's, it's fair for it. Yeah. I <laughs> mean, geez, one side. no way. Just, just <laughs> one way. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the monitors, you know, in one way, the literature you get in. I mean, the pretty pictures, this, that, and the other, and at the end of the day, I'm still paying more. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Yeah. And it's really not, a, it's not bettering our situation. That's where we are. You know, it's livability, and we've got a beautiful state that we live in, if you will, mm -hmm. and we don't have as, as many of the issues that other states have. Uh, the environment is beautiful. And, and so I, the thing is that, on, on the other hand, though, we, we uh, other entities are coming around, and, and I'll, I'll be straight up with you, the marijuana issue, we still haven't dotted the I's and crossed the yeah, T's on that issue yet in terms of where it's going to be, location, and all that. I mean, You just brought weird. up a topic for a whole other show, but one of the things, the traps that I think Oregonians have found themselves in is having to choose between the environment and jobs in the economy. Yeah, yeah. And it's not one or the other. We can have a good environment and have good paying jobs and a better economy. Yeah. We, we, we don't ever want to fall into the trap of saying, oh, Oregon's a pretty place, but we can't have good jobs at the same okay. time. Yeah. Well, you're right, and and I, really, I'm I'm going to really be looking forward to to set you, you're setting up these other committees, and hopefully you can staff them like Anne Marie. She's going to probably be doing more work. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's uh, fun. No one person. Yeah, I mean, but, we have lots so of good important. people. Yeah. It's so important because I'm thinking about the when, when we talked about the environment. I think about the the situation in California with water rights. Yeah. You know, that's that's some heavy stuff. And imagine the corruption that's going to be coming out on that end of it. Yeah. That's when I just think about all the fires that are going on, yes. if we could responsibly log our forests, it'd be nice to yeah. log them instead of burn them. That's good. That's good. Well, I guess we got about we got about a half a minute now, Dave. I think we do about 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 a, about, a, about a half a minute, maybe about another minute or so aspect of it. So, any other announcements you might want to make? We got some. We got a little time. Let's go back and let let the people know how to access. Um, uh, get this tour. Get yep. this tour. Well, well one, once again, the, the website is OregonRepublicanParty.org, and uh, on there you'll be able to see the tour schedule, and uh, you'll be able to see this information that I promised about you, how your representative or senator voted on some of these ethics and government transparency bills, and um, you know some other good information about the party's doing. But um, you got a phone number. And too. the phone number again is 503-595-8881. Okay. And so they can certainly call that number. Um, it's staffed uh, every, you know, eight to five weekdays, and you can leave a message after hours, and uh, they should be able to answer any questions you have about the tour, where it's going to be, and and how it's going. Yeah. And then we're going to give you the last word. Oh, very good. So I hope to see everyone Tuesday night at the River Shore Bar and Grill. The last stop on the tour, if you can't make it to this one here in the metro area, will be in Washington County. We're working on that location. Okay. What was the other thing? How, how you? I got to ask you. How are your kids doing? My kids are great. This lady, she's a hardworking lady too, by the way. I want you to know that, folks. She's got family, the the whole nine yards, but she's she's really committed. I want to I thank you. I love my kids. Too. She she does. She really does. And Bill, it's, it is a pleasure. Likewise, and Bruce. And hopefully you you're going to be very successful in your in your tenure. You got a you got a tough job, but anything we can do here. Got a great crew to work with. And anything we can do, we'll we'll work. Okay. Okay. Fine. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. Appreciate it. And have a good one. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, Anne. Good to Thanks, see Bill. you. Thanks, Bill. Okay, bye.